Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. I am Jack, joined by... Giovanni. And it has been quite some time since we've done this, but we are here for another K-pop album review. Uh, quite fitting that uh, the last time we did this was with Dreamcatchers. Uh, I forget. Apocalypse. I forget. Is From it us. From Us, right? Or was it Save Us? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, save us, save us, yeah. Yeah, it was Apocalypse Save Us, and now we're here for Apocalypse From Us. Mm-hmm. And, uh, up. I guess, uh, Gio, sort of, we'll, we'll get into it as we review the album, but sort of explain, I guess, what was your thought process in the sense of, like, what was it about this, like, or what what was it when you first listened to this album that made you say, you know... Let, let's do an episode on this. Um, it was the title track because I was very skeptical about it because you know the last two weren't as um good as uh, Dreamcatcher could have done, in my opinion. Though so, uh, my opinions on Vision have changed a little bit, but uh, so the, the title track as soon as it started, I was like, you know, it, it, it felt to me very like OG Dreamcatcher in the sense of just how the like the first few seconds of the song went it was you know with the slow vocals and then it had like the the very like intense instrumentals it reminded me a lot of Chase Me and Good Night so the nostalgia was there and that really that made me like very excited for the comeback and then I watched the music video and it I don't know it made me feel um, sad but happy at the same time. It's kind of like oh, like I've missed these um this group so much. So yeah, just the the title track alone did it for me. Yeah, what's it called? Uh, as I told Gio, what's it called? Uh, I didn't even know they were dropping an album until Gio like messaged me right in the morning, and uh, if you've been listening to the other section of the podcast you you know i've been doing a thing called uh or i've been like walking an album a day and so uh you know immediately i was like well if geo's hyping this up you know i got i gotta give i gotta give him one more shot but uh uh the the way i put it because uh i don't i don't know if it's just like a, a niche sort of like meme and like i don't know how often it's used in other areas but like Especially in, like, uh, the sports world, like, is where it, like, started. But, like, I would see a bunch of people use it in, like, the wrestling world, too. Like, they would joke around and be like, oh, this is a legacy game for, like, this wrestler, this this player for a, t- for a sports team. And they meant it in the sense of, like, you know, they've been doing pretty bad. And, like, this is, like, their final chance, essentially, to, like, prove they're not washed or, like, you know, that they're... You know, like, they, they still got it. And so, like, that was my sort of mindset going into this album was, like, this is a legacy game for Dreamcatcher in my eyes because the past two didn't like them um, all that much. I will say, uh, similar to Geo, I feel like my my sort of original criticisms, or I, I don't remember too much what I said. I know what I gave the album, but, like, in terms of the title track, I don't remember too much about what I said about it. But I do feel a bit different about, um, what was the title track for that one? Uh, Vision. Vision. I do feel a bit different because for whatever reason, despite not having listened to that Dreamcatcher album since we did that review, like I never played it once after that. I still have a, like the, the somewhat like chorus part of it stuck in my head. Like, you know, mm-hmm. when like it says something, uh, oh gosh, uh, Hold on, let me look up the, the lyrics to, to Vision. But, like, I do, like, I end up, like, getting it stuck in my head from time to time. And I'm like, is that song good? Or, like, like you know, like, I, I, have, I, I start being like, was I hating too much in a sense, you know? Like, that's how I feel looking back on it. I'm like, was I hating too much on that? Or, like, does it feel uh, deserved in a sense? But let's get right into... Uh, Apocalypse from us, uh, Geo. If you have any backstory, uh, 
I know right here on the the genius page because I, I want to look at like some of the lyrics. It says that this was their first their first album after they renewed their contracts. Yes. So I don't I don't remember the exact timeline because I haven't been keeping up with them that well. But um, just like you said, this is the first album after or mini album after they renewed their contract, which was kind of. Um, Unexpected in the grand scheme of things when it comes to K-pop, because you know once groups hit the seven-year mark, that's like oh, you know we had our fun time to go you know pursue acting or you know being models for certain companies you know or things solo like that. Artists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, solo careers as well, and so it was kind of surprising, not really, but you know just following the whole uh, stigma of the seven-year contract. Uh, they renewed it, and I think it was like five months ago when it happened, maybe a bit longer. So we did have to wait a, a little bit for the album, which is kind of good and bad, I guess, in the sense that, you know, the longer they had to work on it, the better it is kind of thing. So since the last comeback, since Vision dropped, that was, it's been nine months, I believe. Uh, so story wise this is the the ending of it of the, the true apocalypse of the yeah of the apocalypse trilogy the and from what I've seen on like reddit and you know certain posts it's pretty much the uh, dreamcatcher have been what's the word for it there's, there's like a there's a, like a kind of uh, there's a scientific word for it where like when a park is under uh, you know, when, like, a zoo or, like, a park needs to, like, you know, chill for a bit be- from, like, all the the, tra- the human traffic, they put it in, like, rehabilitation. Mm. And that's pretty much the, what they're, they've done to the Earth. So they put this uh, giant force field around it to protect the Earth, to let, you know, Earth heal from all the disaster that humans have caused it. And now they're saying bon, bon voyage to Earth and... Uh, the, um, I guess humans as well, because it's time to free the earth, you know, and let, you know, nature and humans, I guess, take their course again. So that's pretty much the story. It's like their separation from earth after all they've been through together. Nice. That's like the lore of it. Um, there's more like little things like apparent somehow, I'm not entirely sure how, but she on her character i guess in this trilogy uh somehow died or dies in bon voyage while trying to save uh according to people it's like when when she, when uh when she's trying when she's protecting uh sua from the the giant blast that comes at them that's like when she dies she like sacrifices herself so that she could get away um that's like what people are saying uh, you know, some parts don't really make sense, but that's what that's like the thing that went with K-pop. Uh, certain shots ruin the whole uh, thing, but you know, that's a topic, topic for a different discussion. Other than that, there's like little Pokemon-looking uh, creature. They've named it Selly. I don't know. I don't know why. It's just that's the name of it, Selly. Uh, so yeah besides that it's kind of like the MB is really beautiful they did some really cool things with it but yeah, that's pretty much it man alright alright well get straight into the album obviously we're starting off with Bone Voyage but uh, real quickly since it's very short what do you think of the intro I thought the intro was very uh, very creative and the uh, instruments that they chose to use because yeah. it felt like at one point there was a lot of like womp 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 kind of sounds i don't know like you know i'm not like a musical genius so i don't know what exactly they're using but there was like a lot of uh warping sounds i guess that kind of like changed the dynamic of the intro it, it wasn't like the, the typical you know maybe there's like some piano and that's like hard guitar with like some uh what are they called like drums, like what's the word? Repercussion? The per- percussion? Per- percussions, yeah. 
like that kind of like you know the slow fast slow kind of structure um but yeah i thought i thought it was good it was good not my favorite but it, i thought it was a, a very different intro from what we've seen so far yeah. oh i should mention this that since their last comeback maybe since mason uh the original producer slash composer uh, there's two of them there's Olander and what's the other guy's name Olise I think something like that one of them left they left because they got a, a different business opportunity so this album was completely made by a, a different group of producers composers so it's not the same two guys anymore so this is a new crew that you know took over the Dreamcatcher production and yeah so that's that might uh, play into the whole uh, why it sounds different but yeah that is like something that we should know when reviewing this album mm. all right all right well let's get right into the title track bone voyage uh kind of touched on a bit earlier but getting really specific into it uh how do you feel about this song Gio? I really liked it in the beginning, and I don't know if that's good, kind of like a small spoiler for what I'm about to say, but listening to it now, it really depends on where I'm listening to it, because, you know, live vocals are like very, a very cool thing that, you know, some K-pop groups do, and sometimes depending on how the mixing is and how the backtrack is, how loud it is, like, you know, a lot of things factor into how good of a performance they can do when singing live. Uh, the thing about Bon Voyage, when I'm listening to it live, it doesn't have the same uh, clearness that it has when listening to, like, Apple Music or, like, watching the music video. Mm. And that really, I guess it could it could be just a situational thing. Maybe that one performance was didn't have the best mixing or whatever. But... Uh, watching the stages, watching the, you know, when they go on radios, it didn't have the same effect on me that it that it did the first time I listened to it, and it's because of the live vocals. And it seems kind of ironic to be saying that, like, how could live vocals ruin a song? It's supposed to be making it, you know, it's supposed to be better because it's, the artist is actually singing live. But for me, for, for, I don't know, it might be like a personal tasting, but it just doesn't hit the same when it's sung live, you could really notice the change in tempos. Like when watching the music video, I guess the visuals hop out a lot because you're watching. Uh, it's like, you know, it's a very slow start with Yukion and going on into like, you know, the small build up of Jiu onto the pre chorus to the chorus. And that's when, like, like boom, you get hit with a lot of instrumentals at the same time. And it's cool watching it live. You go from like a very cool, like a very soft build up to the hard hitting chorus. And then after, immediately after, you're brought back down to the same slowness again. And it's very evident during the live performance, at least for me. And that kind of, like, kills the vibe. Because you see during, like, after, towards the end of the chorus, when it's like, oh, I know you, I know you. I, like, I'm expecting, like, you know, a little bit more. Just, like, give me, like, you know, a little bit more intensity and then drop it again. But it's like, a, like the chorus, the hard hitting, I know you, I know you, dead. And I'm just like, uh mm. seeing that live, not for me. All right, all right. Definitely will have to check that out to see if I get something similar. I'm mm -hmm. not going to lie. Uh, I was a bit worried when I first played the song because like, it started off slow, you know. I was like, uh, they're starting off slow. Uh, how is this going to play out for the rest of the song? I did like the... Like, not necessarily yeah. like slow in terms of like the pace, but I like how there was like this feeling of like build up for it to get to the chorus. And uh, I don't know, I really liked the chorus part of it. It just felt like Dreamcatcher to me. Like not like I don't know. It just felt like this, like a lot of the music that I've loved from Dreamcatcher. This sounded like very similarly. Especially I, I liked a lot of the vocals and emotion and feeling in it all. Uh, one of the lines I really liked, I think it was like towards the beginning of the song. Uh, the translation I got from it said, uh, every cell in me is drawn to you. I thought that was a real great line. Um, mm -hmm. 
I I still don't know if this song has a rap portion in it. I know there's like a portion after like the first chorus that like maybe you want to classify as rap, but I don't know if it really is. And it was something I told like Gio from the start that uh n- like not having that like definitive rap portion really helped the overall like flow of this song compared to like a lot of other k-pop songs where it's like it just abruptly has like a rap part that like if like it really feels like it was just stuck in there you know Mm -hmm. like rather than really trying to examine and really trying to like create the music so that like it perfectly fits in a lot of times you get music where it's just like really shoehorned in and it sounds so out of place uh yeah the the lyrics of it are very i think that's what it was like reading the lyrics and you know the, the all the nostalgia plus seeing dreamcatcher uh in a way being dreamcatcher again i think that's what made me feel so um emotional to it because it's kind of like just imagine if they didn't renew their contracts kind of like the same thing with when we talked about um with twice when where after they did they renewed their contracts and it's like oh this could have been the last one and uh this one could have been very fitting with the whole bone voyage you know mm-hmm. have a good journey but i don't know just kind of like i guess it, it just made me feel very like emotional not to the point where I started crying, but I definitely felt something. And to the whole, Dami's part was very nice. I like that she's singing more. Um, not to be a hater, but I really prefer her singing than her rapping. Her rapping, or rapping in general in, you know, these kind of songs has always been cringy to me. Because it's just, it doesn't fit. Like, you're forcing it so hard that it just doesn't fit. And with this one, it was kind of nice because it wasn't necessarily a rap. It was just kind of like, you know, uh, like slower singing compared to the rest of the song and it kind of like it fit the tone of the song a lot better than let's say during Vision when she just randomly starts rapping about Jackie Chan and she's just like come on man don't do that but yeah the, the, the rapping if you can if you want to consider it rapping was really well done in this one yeah I also like the I also like Han Dong in this in this song her 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 vocals, not necessarily improved, but they I feel like they were better used in this song. Yeah. And her visuals were insane. Yeah, I really like the vocals on this one. Moving on, though, if there's nothing more to be said to the second track, uh, Damien. What do you think of this one? I, 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 I hate this one. Not gonna lie. Like, oh my mama, I don't like it. <laughs> it's just not, I, I don't like songs like this. I don't like the the da na 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 da na na na. I don't like rhythms like that. I want a, a, a you know an exponentially growing rhythm, not da na da da na da da na da. Like I can't get into the groove of it. Like I listened to it the first time I op- I, put, I opened up the album on iTunes. I gave it like a cool thirty seconds, maybe even less, and I was like, yo. Skipping this one every time, <laughs> uh, and then I went back. It's like, no, we're gonna make a podcast on it. I need to, you know, have actual, you know, and I need to say critical things about the song. I listen to it again, full in full. Don't like it, and that's pretty much it. I just don't like the rhythm. It's not for me. This song definitely, to me, it had like a futuristic sort of vibe to, like some of the way I was listening to it. It was very fast paced. Um, I did like the vocals. Uh, I don't. I. I don't know if like they were actually used or not, but at some point it sounded like there was some type of like vocal effects, and I really liked the way it sounded there. But yeah, I didn't have like too much to say about this song other than just you know, it was very fast paced. I liked the vocals and I liked sort of the vibe I was getting from it. But yeah, that that's all I really have to say about this one. Mm. It was, uh, I guess it's a, it's a good filler song between Bon Voyage and Purpose, because yeah, uh, yeah, 
I listen, there's not much else to say, so let's move on to, you know, purpose. You know, the one that really took everyone by the neck when it, when people started listening to it. What did you think of it? You know, let's switch it up. I really liked the, the aura around this song. Like, I thought this one, like, was real great. Uh, it... It definitely like there was there were some parts that caught me off guard. Like I know there's a rap portion in this one, and it caught me off guard a bit. And I to this to this point, I'm still like trying to listen to the song, you know, like over and over, and like see whether I like that portion or not. You know, uh, I also noticed that like a good portion of this song, from what I remember, was like in English, or like at least when I was listening to it, it seemed like there was really a lot of it in English, and that's definitely something that caught me off guard. Um, a great line that I liked from this one was, uh, with every touch, I feel the burn loves a curse. I really liked that line. That was a real good one. Um, Mm -hmm. and then I think it was at the end. I don't know for sure, but the part I really loved was there's this one part where like the different voices start like overlapping and like colliding with each other in a sense. And to me, it was like just really good like i don't want to say perfect but like that's how i felt about it because like when it's done right it's probably one of my favorite sort of vocal directions musicians take especially you know well it's not even just with uh groups but like even sometimes a solo artist will do it where like you know especially like if it's like the final chorus they'll have this part where it's like you just hear like all these different vocals start overlapping and all that and you know when done right, it's like one of my favorite things in this one. Like I just really like the way they did it for this song. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, I first watched the they did a what's it called the, the showcase of the mini album, and I watched the first the, the the I listened to it first there, watching them actually performing with the chore- chore- choreography. Um, it was very cool. I saw a clip of it on Twitter of Dami's part specifically when she's like, you know, doing her rap thing. She's like on the floor looking all, you know, evil and stuff. And I thought it was very cool. So I was like, oh, this song is cool. So I went, I went to Apple Music to, you know, listen to it in better quality. I liked it there. But I'm seeing uh, like a recurring theme here, at least, you know, for me personally. I listened to it today in the morning with my girlfriend. And it just didn't hit the same. And it was the live performance of it at a radio station. It felt all over the place. And I think it was because, you know, the difference between this time and the time with the performance. Because, like, when they're performing, they're, you know, making sure that their facial expressions match the mood of the song. You know, when they start saying, uh, the call me devil or... What did they say? This is like, call me devil something something. Uh, you know, during that part... Oh, what's the lyric? I'll I don't show you that. more? Yeah, during that part of the song, they're kind of like, you know, they're making sure they, they look like... Um, what's the word? Like, uh, it's, I, I don't want to say sexy, because it's not sexy, but, you know, that kind of, like, uh, like, in that field of... Uh, respective emotions right they're they're looking like intense but then during the radio they're over here smiling and like doing these little cute dances and that really put me off so i think that's what it is but i don't know i have like i'm starting to think that this album doesn't have a lot of replay replay value and that might be a hot take but yeah purpose i I really liked that at first and it's very quickly um not hitting the same for me I definitely feel I feel like some people are going to tell you that like it seems unfair to like have the live version like affect your sort of perception of the song on its own but like personally I really feel what you're saying because like a lot of times the live version can like enhance it you know or like these performances you know because when you get visuals that's what you start associating with with a song you know and if you're getting all these vibes from the song when you listen to it but then the visuals are like completely different you know it's gonna throw you off a bit and it's gonna be like well 
you know, that that wasn't anything what I was imagining, you know. It's kind of like when you, like, look into the lyrics of some of these songs and you, like, see what the meaning is. Or you see what they're saying. You're, it, it's somewhat, in a sense, like, turns you away from it because you're like, that that's weird. Like, that's not what I was expecting this song to be about, you know. Or like, oh, that's what that song's about, you know. Visuals can definitely, and, like, the live performances definitely can, I agree, can either enhance or you know, sort of change your view on the way you view a song. Because there have been plenty of times where I've listened to, like, a live version of a song, and it's literally enhanced my listening experience. Like, I've listened to, like, some live uh, versions of songs, and I'm just like, I almost want to say that's better than the one they recorded, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've um, listened to it, but this is... Um, you see Painted Black by Rolling Stones? I think Have I you ever did. seen like a live performance of it? I don't think I've seen a live performance, but I'm pretty sure I've more than likely heard that song. Yeah. When you listen to it like on Apple Music, it bangs. But the live performance of it, um, I don't know if I can say this, but it's atrocious. Because... The instrumentals play a bit... I know this is completely irrelevant to Dreamcatcher, but I, I do want to make the point. The instrumentals play a very big part in Painted Black. Because, you know, with the drums and then the guitar and then, like, you know, the other strings, it, like, it, everything needs to be there so that the song hits the same. And then with the added vocals from the singers, from very good vocals. But then when they're performed live, the thing about live performances is that it's not... Okay, uh, let's let's see if you uh, agree with me. The like the studio version of it, the the version that is released on Apple Music and like on all other platforms, that to me is uh, like on quote unquote the perfect version of it. Like there's no mistakes. Everything has been adjusted to be as perfect as it as it can be. So that's what is always in my head. If you please name any song out there, I'll always think of that version of it. Because that is the perfect version, quote unquote. So then, when when the live performance comes, and then the artist starts, you know, changing, uh, I guess like the tempo of which they say certain lyrics, that really bugs me. Because I, my brain has a certain, um, has the song played a certain way, but when it's different, that's why I don't like covers. Because covers is like, yeah, it's cool, and then like maybe some parts are better. But nothing, and then they can never beat the original for me, because the original is the original. Cover is a cover, so it's, it's like that's the one thing for me. So when it's like a live performance, and they start like you know, not with pro, pro, uh, with purpose, propose specifically, but like in general, sometimes when they start, you know, so the, the high note isn't the same. Not because, and then it's just like little things start bugging me, and then they just start adding up. To, and then it just, like, ruins the life for me. I don't know but, if this is a controversial thing to say, but, like, I personally think that's why I wouldn't enjoy most of the artists that I listen to. Like, I wouldn't enjoy a concert of theirs. Especially, you know, again, like, I don't know if it's controversial to say, but, like, especially, like, in the rap genre. Because I don't know if you've seen how many times, but, like, many times they'll, like, not even be singing the song, you know? And it's not even, like, sometimes it's not even to, like, let the crowd sing it. Sometimes they'll, like, be, like, singing parts of the song, but cutting in and out to let the audio do it as well. And it's just, like, I thought the whole point of going to the concert to see these things live was to see it performed live, you know, not to, like, have the version you could listen to at any point, but with worse quality at a concert, you know, be playing, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, That's I, why I would, I've seen, I would never pay to go to a rap concert because because yeah, I've seen you know, a lot of concerts that are like that and I'm just like what's the point of pain if the artist isn't doing you know essentially their job you know mm-hmm. so like I definitely feel that but well, back to what you were saying earlier yeah the last the last minute of the song no just like the last the second chorus when it, you know it goes from Shua to Shion and then to Dami that part slaps and the, the combination of vocals, is, like you said, it just slaps. It goes very, very hard. I really like that about that song. And any song that does that uh, to that success. 
Yeah. Like I said, one of my favorite sort of uh, musical directions that like artists can take. But like I said, it has to be done right, you know, because uh, mm-hmm. my dad definitely feels like a, a uh, well, he feels differently about it where it's like he feels like a lot of times it's like too much going on, you know, which I definitely feel like there are songs where like they try and do that overlapping thing and it starts becoming like too much, you know. Uh, but me, it's like when they can do it right, it's like it just works so perfectly. And this one's definitely one of those songs where it's like the way they just transition from you know, person to person and the way they overlap it. It's just, I really love the way they did it on this song. But moving on to our final track of this, of the album, very short album. I'm pretty sure it was only like 14 minutes total in length. We have to you. Uh, what'd you think about this one? I haven't looked at the lyrics for it, so I don't understand. I don't know like the full meaning of it, but um, you know, vocally, instrumentally, as a song itself, it, it goes hard. I really liked it. It reminds me a lot of, uh, you know, back going to the idea of like this being a dream catcher coming back. It really goes back to like the earlier um, ballads that they used to do. Even like during Boca, this reminds me a lot of the song that Gio wrote. Gio wrote. I really liked it. It's a, it's the the way that the, the little um, voice, um, what do you call it, voice modification that they did. It was really cool. It makes it feel um, like you're listening through it, or like you're listening to it through like one of those old radios, and it has like that like the static kind of noise to it. But mm. it just kind of like it just puts you like in a whole new setting. If you just like, you know, really start listening to it. Hmm. Yeah, I really like this song as well. I really liked a lot of like the lyrics, you know, again, I I, I never know how accurate a lot of these lyrics are, because especially you can look at all different videos and each person just translate it differently, you know. But I really liked for the most part, a lot of the lyrics I was seeing on this song. I really liked. Uh, I really like this song a lot you know like i don't really have too much to say about it than like how you were saying you know just the vocals on this song were very good i liked their uh i liked a lot of their performances on here uh lyrically it has some real great lyrics and real great substance to it and overall i i really enjoyed this one this one was definitely like one of the highlights of the album to me i like the uh, there's certain songs in k-pop that really make you um, appreciate, I guess you could say, the like the Korean language, because of um, yeah, they make it look easy when it comes to wordplay. See, because of how many like syllables there are in Korea in the Korean language, so when they start like doing like those like, I find they very cute. When they're like like in the like, the first few seconds of the song, when Gio like her first like two lines, the way that it's, like it's able to. Um, play with each other just by, you know, speaking the language. It's I, I, I like it when they do that. Or when I, you know, notice it. Mm. Yeah, but overall, uh, I guess real quickly, because we're obviously, I don't know if you have a rating for this album. I honestly don't know if I have a rating for this album. But, I definitely want to touch on the thing you said earlier, as controversial as it may be, about uh, the replay value. I think I want to say I feel very similar to what you said, because uh, though I do believe this is like a good sort of return to form mini album for Dreamcatcher, you know, I I just don't know what the replay value is on it, you know? Mm-hmm. It's kind of like... It's like a three no like the NBA series is three no and then like the team that's down has one good game. It was like three one now. So like you have to wait and see if they could, you know, continue and win another or if they're just gonna, you know, fall and lose kind of thing. Yeah, this it, it feels like that kind of situation to me. Yeah, exactly. You know, when I brought up the whole legacy game thing, you know, this is this is something that, you know, continuing the sports terminology prevented the sweep, you know, like, mm-hmm. they, 
they showed they can do good as good as they were in the past, but now it's just a thing about consistency, you know, and honestly, if it is controversial to some people, I'll say this, look at it this way. I think it's fair to say that this album might not have as great replay value or, you know, to look at it as a sort of like refresher, like like restart for Dreamcatcher post uh, contract renewal, especially because it's only four songs and like 13 minutes because I think the intro, which is only like a one minute song, you know, so it's like four songs, 13 minutes. It's not much for you to really sink your teeth into. It's not anything that you would uh, confidently, like, invest in, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, this is this shows that they can be, they can get back to what, you know, we as the fans really loved. But I wouldn't be confident enough to, like, invest and be like, you know, all right, because of this album, I know the next one's going to be great. It's more like, because this one was good in comparison to the previous two, I now have a little bit more hope that they can continue this, you know? Mm-hmm. That, that's how I, that, um, I, that's definitely how I feel about it when I heard you bring up the replay value thing. Like, I think initially, like, it's not to say that I don't, I, that I think, all the songs are, like, bad now after, like, listening to it multiple times. But, like, I think what was so, like, why it was so loved, like, initially on first listen is because it was just such, you know, a difference from the previous two albums, you know? Mm-hmm. I feel, I saw, I, at one point, I was starting, like, to, this, this is a very controversial take, like, Deadass, this is controversial. I used to, I started thinking that Dreamcatcher were only renewed to milk more money out of us, or well, not out of the fan base, because of how poor quality the music was was at the time. But with this, it's kind of like, yeah, it's a little bit better quality, but at the same time, it's only five songs. We waited nine months for it. Cool. You know, the money's going into, like, more money's going into the 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 music, the music videos, as you can see from, you know, all the VFX and CGI. The editing was pretty cool too, but um, I mean it's, it's kind of fair. Like two releases ago, we were at um, the first one the, with Mason. It was a full album with fourteen songs, and you know we can't always have that. You know, not everyone is twice. You know, a little throw of shade at everyone, but yeah, I, it's, it's replay value. It's not. It's not going to be. It's, it's short, so it's like you listen to track one. Two minutes later, you're on track four, and I got it. Well, that was the point of that. Yeah, and especially because it's such a short album, like, the replay value is going to work then, like, almost immediately, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, especially, like, looking at it, like, from our perspective and reviewing it, you know, it's like, maybe while we're trying to, like, come up with our thoughts for, like, a song, you have to listen to it maybe, like, two, three times, you know? And that's just for the review. It's not counting maybe any other time you might revisit it. And it's like, sooner or later, you're going to be like, man, I felt like I've heard this song, you know, a million times already. But, like, it's only because, like, th- you're just going back to that album so often because of how short it is, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I think a similar thing or, like, a similar comparison was uh, I've and uh new jeans you know where like they only they both only had like about maybe like six songs out you know before i came out with their full album you know it's like they have six songs out so it's like sooner or later you're gonna wear those songs thin you know does that make them any less good i don't know that's up to you depending on how quickly you get annoyed by songs you know but like it's definitely a thing of like if it's only like such a small amount of music that you're getting you know it's not going to have that great of replay value, at least in my opinion, because you're going to, you know, continue listening and listening. And at some point you're going to be like, man, I wish there was, I wish there was more like songs on this album. Like even if it was just maybe like three more songs. So it felt like you had more options to go back to listen to, especially because not everyone's going to like every single song off an album. So let's say someone likes two songs off this album 
you know, it's like they're going back to those two the most, and it, they're they're gonna go through them pretty quickly, you know. Mhm. Do you remember back when we when we re- uh, reviewed uh, between one and two, how we were saying that oh, this one ends very fast, but it's not the same. It ends very fast. It's like oh, that one ended like way too fast because it was you know every song was a banger and we wanted more. This one just ends very fast. And I don't know if that's throwing shade, but that's just like, that's how I see it. This one just ends very fast. You start with a cool intro, Bon Voyage, banger. Let's see, like, if a week a week from now, it's still a banger. And then Demian, which is a skip, a propose to you, and then that's it, you go home. Yeah. So, like, maybe, maybe this one could be like a seven song mini album. Seven would have been a better number than five. Yeah, I honestly think seven is like the perfect number for a lot of albums, you know. Between one and two was seven songs and it was really good. You know, I think it was something we said in that album where like it it made you want more, but at the same time you were fine with it being seven and not having like a ton of filler songs in it, you know. Like I think what we said was like Maybe could have done three more, get the get the ten on there, and you still felt like the quality would have been great, you know? But, like, at the same time, it's, like, a lot of people, and, like, us included, I think we're, like, fine with the seven because we were, like, like you said, it ended quickly, but it, was, it wasn't in the sense of, like, it passed you by quickly. It was, like, man, that's it. I want more of this, you know? I want more of what they were doing on this album. Did you listen to um, P.I.'s... Love or loved? Yeah. Is that uh, did we do a review on that? I don't remember. I don't think um, we did. That's, because that EP is five songs, but again, that is a different story. Because at least to me, when I listen to those songs, each song literally takes me on its own journey. The vibes of it are completely different. Sure, they might you know be kind of similar. But to me, they're completely different. Because, like, when I listen to The Middle With You, it literally takes me to this, like, uh, I'm, I'm literally on top of a mountain looking at the person that I love. And I'm just like, yo, I'm literally experiencing what life is. But then we go to Tangerine, and it's, like, a completely different story. You know, she has tangerine hair, blah, 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 blah. It's like, oh, okay, well, now we're talking about... And it might be the same person that you're on top of the mountain with, but now it's in a different context. You're looking at, you know, what she, who she is, what she looks like. And then Endless Summer takes you on another journey. So it's like, it's like a, a story in five parts, basically. And that, that album doesn't seem short to me, or that EP isn't short to me. It's like the perfect length. But with this one, not to hate on it, I'm just saying, you know, contrasting different, you know, similar length EPs with... Apocalypse from us. The story really is only Bon Voyage. After that, it's just three songs that would go well being in the same EP with them. Well, yeah, I feel like too because Demian is in a good song in my opinion. But there's no like story, and that's like another thing that we should talk about. Yeah, I feel like the lyrics, like you could maybe find ways to connect it to the theme of Bon Voyage. But also, it isn't like a strong enough sort of connection to its title track. Which I think I brought up uh, in one of the albums like I listened to for my walk. Where I was like, it just didn't feel like... Uh, like I forgot what album it was I listened to. But it didn't feel like you know they really arranged the album well. Which is a whole nother like, rant for another day. Because we're about like a minute left on this episode. But like, you know, the way you align songs, the way you... Per- you meticulously come up with an album and what songs are made for this album specifically you know I feel like you know no hate to the genre but I feel like K-pop a lot of times doesn't get that right all the time you know Mm -hmm. sometimes they'll just throw songs like how you said they have a similar vibe Mm -hmm. but with about 25 seconds left Gio final thoughts or ratings for this album Um, Dreamcatcher did really well this comeback and their success is only growing seeing how they already have two wins with this one so yeah best of luck to them I guess yeah any final rating I'd give it a solid 7 
Yeah, I say like a, a six or seven is a definitely better than before. Mm-hmm.